this is the annoying sound my processor fan makes. So we're going to change that out with a Cooler Master fan, and we're going to do that next. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine. I'm going to be changing out my processor fan. The AMD version is just way too loud. I want to cool it a little bit more, especially with all the video that I do. So I ended up getting this. It's the Cooler Master Hyper T2. It's the, I guess it's the lower end of them, but uh, in everything that I figured out, this is actually going to fit in my case. There are bigger models if you do a lot of overclocking, but keep in mind, if it doesn't fit in your case, then it's not gonna work. And the reason why is it stands on end as opposed to sits on the processor. In fact, what sits on the processor is right there uh, on the Hyper T2. So this is simple unboxing. Move this out of the way. We've got the fan here, um, which I'll pull out really quick. And as you can see, we've got We've got the heat sinks. This, this end right here is what is gonna sit on top of the processor. And of course, it's got a fan. And the cool thing about this is on the other side, you can clip another fan onto if you need to. As you can see, it's a standard heat sink processor, a little bit bigger than the one that I have inside of the machine right there. It's not liquid cool, it's all fan cooled. And the idea is the fan's gonna push the heat this way. So you wanna have it in a direction so it'll go out of the computer, if anything. This is a standard heatsink fan, so it'll work on Intel and AMD processors. This is the AMD clip right here, and these are the Intel clips right here. You also get some uh, thermal paste and some screws right there. If you decide you want to use some uh, different thermal paste, you can purchase that, of course, but this should do the job. I don't see any problems with that. And then, of course, the screws are for the Intel adaption, which we're not going to do. Um, we're going to do the AMD uh, connection and go from there. But definitely uh, for the price, which was about $20, $22 on Amazon, I, I'm hoping this fan is going to do a lot less noise than the AMD. So let's, let's get it into the computer. All right, so as you can see, this is the inside of my computer. This is the fan that uh, came with the AMD system and the bearings are just way too noisy when it gets really fast it'll, it just made that noise that you heard at the beginning of this episode here because um, i have a lot of power i do a lot of video stuff with this with my video input cards this is actually the his uh, r9 390 card which is at eight gigabytes it's really sweet and i'll have a video on that and of course my memory and, and hard drives and stuff like that but i need it to be quiet i also on the case head i also have another fan so I have a good air circulation going through this uh, this machine, um, but I need it to be quieter. So that's why I'm switching it out with this uh, this Cool Master Cooler Master uh, fan. Now, like I said, if the fan sits like this, so if you get there's different versions of this. You want to measure the case from where the processor would sit to the top of the case. You can all, like I said, you can also attach another fan over here if you really want uh, it to be as cool as possible, If you're, especially if you're overclocking. That's very important. But the big thing here is we want it to set in here and we want it to be as quiet as possible in a fan system. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to go to a liquid cooled system. I really don't wanna do that just yet. So I made the measurements, everything looks good. This is gonna set like this because we want the airflow to go through and out this, this back part of the case here. So here's how, what we're gonna do. I already kind of dismantled this to make sure that it worked perfect, but you wanna pull the power on your, uh, on your uh, fan here. You wanna lift this. That's this lever right here. You basically lift it up and it'll let it go on the AMD system. The Intel system, a little bit different, like I said, and of course they have the attachments for that. Now this is the important part of pulling out a processor fan. You don't wanna do it cold. You wanna turn on the computer for a couple minutes, let it warm up just a little bit, and then let it cool down so you can actually touch some of these uh, some of these items. But the idea, if it's freezing cold and you went go and pull this thing out, you might actually pull the processor out as well. Even though it's latched in there, it can happen. So let it warm up for a minute or two, then turn it off, and then you can get into here. You pull the latch up simply, you pull these little dials up, and then what you wanna do is you wanna rock it and gently rock it back and forth until the thermal paste actually pops off. Now, to grab my Cooler Master, and I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna see how I can position it. It has this little uh, plastic here that says, please remove when you're, uh, before you use it. So I'm gonna remove it right now, set it right there. 
And then I'm just gonna set this on here to see how this works. Now I basically said that uh, you, wanna, you wanna be able to move it so it has uh, flow out here. In this case, uh, apparently with the, uh, with the latch, which is gonna go in here eventually, I've gotta put the processor like this. So you don't, if you put the processor like this, heat is gonna go up and out. If you put the processor down like this, it's gonna go down and out. And if you have a fan here, which I do, it will, basically the heat will disperse that way because heat always rises. And if you've got a desktop that stands upward, then, then the, the idea is that heat will go down, kind of bend down and come back up. And I got a fan right here that's gonna catch it to blow it out of the case. So I'm, I'm just gonna place it here just to get a good idea of how it's gonna work. I'm not putting anything down just yet. As you can see, if I had put my case uh, door back on, it's not gonna touch it. It's not a big deal if this gets touched, but it may make the side of the door a little bit warm as you go. It's, it might even be more of a dispersion, but uh, it, it could cause some problems. So uh, I highly recommend that you, you test this out and make sure everything fits before you go putting it back on and putting it back in. So this looks good. The fan's gonna go down. There's enough airflow here because we got a fan right here in the pro in the uh, power supply. The fan, the heat's gonna go down and then come out like that. It's gonna avoid the uh, graphics card, which it has its own two fans, which are blowing out that way uh, through air vents right there. So everything looks good. Let's go into the next step and find my thermal paste. Now, like I said, this thermal paste, I don't, I don't see any problem. You just use this, but if you want to buy a uh, more powerful thermal paste, I know that there's more better thermal paste, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's, some of these uh, say that they work better in, in higher temperatures, but uh, I, I pretty much trust this stuff. So now we're going to set this down. And like I did in my previous video when I put this machine together, I'm just going to kind of smoosh it around, bring it back up, smoosh it around there. Now we've got more than enough thermal paste that covers the whole processor, and that's the important part. Next thing we need to do is we need to put its little harness on, and like I said, I've got the AMD harness right here. Um, you want to check the instructions on how to put the harness on for the Intel, um, but uh, since I have an AMD processor, this is what I use. I basically slip this in here. There's two little grooves inside the Cooler Master. There you go. So now it's in the two little grooves right there. And I can flip this around. I want to show you the, th the thermal paste coverage over here too. Uh, it might be a little bit blurry, but you can see it's it's totally covered. We're not going to have any problems with that. And be very generous with the thermal paste. It's not going to hurt anything to have extra on there. So we put the, this is going to be a little bit tough since this fan's in the way, but my understanding is this fan unclips as well. So we're just going to unclip it and get it out of the way for now. And we're just going to put the, the full heat sink on. So I'm going to put this on. There's a latch right here, which goes into the plastic. And then I want to make sure that latch is on and I want to make sure that this is absolutely centered. And not, not by the metal, but the copper pipes. Make sure that's in the middle. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to take this side. I'm going to flip this down or flip this in the middle. I'm going to push down. All right, I had a small little problem getting this on, and the reason why is because this clip works a little bit different than the other clip. I had to have this down like this, so I could put this into here. But once I've got it done, I want to make absolutely sure I'm centering the whole thing. So I can actually slide this right now back and forth, and I can still get some thermal paste back and forth. But then when it's not done, this clip will go the other way to hold down. Now it's securely held down by here and once the thermal paste really takes in it will it'll set pretty well. So now I can take this fan and like I said I can put it in this way, I can put it in this way but I'm gonna put it in this way to get the heat out and just simply clip that into place. There's the other side and then of course this is the plug right here. The CPU fan plug is over here and I put that in. I should probably put that in first. And of course there's little guides on the side here. So it'll tell you exactly how to go in and it won't go in any other way. So I put the pins in and I put this fan back on it to, to, to take it off just to get in there. Keep in mind, this is <laughs> putting together computers sometimes, especially if they're inside of the case, 
gets really tough, so uh, it, it's best if you can take it out of the case um, and do it that way, but I didn't want to take all the cards out. Uh, you can definitely do it in here, but you know, patience is a key. Being able to finagle and just do it and be very careful not to bend pins, that's a very important thing. And of course, like I said, grounding yourself. And of course, it's in the middle of summer, so I'm I'm uh, a little bit I'm perspiring a little bit here on this thing. So I'm gonna put this fan back together. All right, so I'm gonna put this case. This is the cover back on. As you can see, the cover is not touching here. In this case, this is plastic, uh, so it would have melted the plastic if it was to touch. All right, let's give it a test. And there's the end result. As you can hear, it's a lot quieter than what it was before. That that one prop propeller plane uh, sound was just not good for what I was doing. And uh, just so you know, I'm running four, five different programs and the CPU for all eight cores. This is the 8350 uh, FX uh, is now running at about 80%, which is what it was running at before. One last thing I want to show you, this is speed fan 4.5.1. As you can see, these are the temperatures inside my machine and no propeller sounds coming out. It's pretty good. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, Geekazine or Think Magazine, put in the geek or geekazine at gmail.com. Keep in mind, if you've got technical problems and things not working, um, please contact the manufacturer over me. I won't be able to, to do too much troubleshooting for your problems. But if you have some basic questions, I'll be able to answer them from there. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Geek out. Here's a little quick tip before we go. You see, this was that warning label I pe peeled up. This is the thermal paste. If you want to keep this thermal paste around, all I have to do is let's see if I can do this with one hand. All you have to do is simply flip it around. To seal it off you can also put it in the refrigerator and then if you need more thermal paste you can just cut it at the ends and go from there